mise au jour, on a fait des essais. What is it to be a good Belgian in 2018? I don't know what it means. Maybe to be white, to be have blue eyes and blonde hair. 29-year-old Cecile Junga isn't someone easily forgotten. Actress, comedian, broadcaster, she answers to all with ease. And yet when she looks in the mirror, she can still find herself struggling for place in the country of her birth. I don't know what is it. Me, I really feel Belgian. I'm deeply Belgian. I am supportive of the Red Devils and I, I am... I am... I like beers. <laughs> Junga delivers the weather report for Belgium's public broadcaster, RTBF. Born in Brussels to Angolan and Congolese parents, she says she learned to use humour to deflect insults growing up. But the insults have grown along with her public profile. And this summer, something broke. Woman um, called to say that I was too dark and uh, she can see me on TV. And I was like, it's crazy. It's like, At first, she tried to shrug it off, but it was one insult too many. It's not normal. I, I work here, I am in my country, I am born in Belgium. I, I'm fed up of all this sh shit, I'm sorry. And so she posted a video online. Voilà quoi, recevoir des euh, sales négresses rendant dans mon pays, en fait, c'est pas drôle quoi. Donc en fait, moi j'en ai marre. It was raw and emotional, and it blew the lid off the not-so-quiet racism that has been allowed to fester in Belgium. <laughs> Matange, a small neighborhood in the heart of Brussels, named after a district in Kinshasa in the years just before what was then called the Belgian Congo, gained its independence in 1960. <laughs> Immigration from the former colonies, including Rwanda and Burundi, was never encouraged. But the Central African community here numbers well over 100,000 people. Critics say many school children today have no idea Belgium even had a presence in Africa, unless they happen to be fans of the comic book hero Tintin, the boy reporter traveling the globe. And then it's a warped one penned in the 1930s and reflecting the prejudice of the time. Tantan, of course, is hugely popular. It remains one of Belgium's best-known exports. There was a move, though, a few years ago to have Tantan au Congo removed from the shelves because of its racist stereotyping. But it's still really easy to pick up pretty much anywhere. When I was at school, I was never taught about the history of Congo, even though it's it's so close linked to the Belgian, Belgian history and forever will be. Musician Tongi Hazavuts goes by the stage name Temi Tan. He was born in Congo in 1985 and moved with his family to small town Belgium when he was six. And my mom was the only black woman in the neighborhood. So we definitely were the kids from, from Congo. And then when I went back to Congo, it was the first time, it was in 2013. Uh, all of a sudden I realized how I was the Belgian guy and I was the white guy. He embraces both sides of his heritage. The fact that Belgium itself can't seem to do it troubles him. I don't know if Belgium is ready to change, but uh, Belgium is facing um, sort of a the deadline is kind of coming. On the outskirts of Brussels, a monument to a distorted history still stands. The roots of the Royal Museum for Central Africa date back to 1897, a showcase for the Belgian king Leopold II's colonial ambition. There is perhaps no greater symbol of Belgium's failure to address the dark chapters of its past. We have one gallery, for example, with the names of the 1600 Belgians that died between 1876 and, uh, 
at the early 20th century in the Congo of Free State. And there's not a single mention about the many Congolese victims of colonization. Director Guido Grisos is the man promising to deliver a more honest narrative when the museum reopens its doors after a five-year renovation. It was not a story of uh, bringing civilization, that it was not a story of uh, eliminating the slave trade, that it was a story of brutal capitalism, looking for resources and looking for profits. The spoils of that plunder can still be seen in grand brush strokes across Brussels. Towering edifices showing off Leopold's wealth, paid for with the blood of his colonial subjects. Millions of Congolese are believed to have perished when Leopold ran the territory as a private enterprise, slave labor for his agents, rushing to extract ivory and rubber, chopping off limbs if quotas weren't met. That these horrors still feel somehow veiled from ordinary Belgians seems extraordinary. An entire nation succumbing to a kind of collective amnesia. For most Belgians, their first encounter with Africa is through a visit of our museum. If then in this museum, you get the impression that Africans don't have culture of their own, that they're primarily wild people, that the European view is superior to the African view. You can't be surprised that that has an, an impact on the attitude of those people when then later on in day-to-day -day life they have to work or meet Africans. So we assume our responsibility there. Whether to engage with the museum as it tries to reform and rebrand has been a difficult question for many in the Central African community. Campaigner Marie Cheusi Robert says true contrition for the wrongs of the past would be to return all the cultural artifacts taken out of colonial Africa and now lining the museum's shelves. Garder ces œuvres, c'est la preuve qu'on les a vaincues. C'est la preuve que la Belgique a vaincu le Congo, le Rwanda et le Burundi. Donc, se débarrasser de cette preuve, c'est se débarrasser du sentiment de supériorité. Others, including artist Aimé Mpane, believe they must engage. Mpane won a competition to design the new museum's signature art installation. It will serve as a contrast to statues still in place from the old era, portraying colonizers as civilizers. Mpani says he had doubts about taking part. Depuis quand je me suis dit non, c'est vraiment notre histoire. Il faut essayer de voir quel sens on peut tirer là-dessus. Si on met pas toi à place, et qui vont le faire? And there are signs of change in Belgium, small though they may be. There's a new square dedicated to Patrice Lumumba, the first prime minister of an independent Congo, Belgium's role in his assassination finally acknowledged. And there is a new mayor in the Brussels commune of Ganshoren, a man everyone wants to say hello to. Pierre Company was just elected Belgium's first black mayor, better known now perhaps than even his famous soccer-playing son Vincent, a former captain of Belgium's national team. The first black mayor in uh, Belgium, it's never happened before, it's historical, we're all happy, yes. Congratulations to my dad. <laughs> Company Senior arrived in Belgium in 1975, a refugee fleeing Congo's post-colonial dictatorship. He prefers not to dwell on divisions, but he does say understanding the past is key to overcoming them. In the case of history, there is no compromise, there is only ignorance. There is no compromise, there is only ignorance. Time, in other words, for the veil to be lifted and for new lines to be drawn in Belgium. I think uh, we are writing a new page of the Belgium and we are, it's my generation and the, the, second, the uh, next generation, it's our world to write what is to be Belgian today. But to untether itself from its past, Belgium must first acknowledge it and atonement is still a long way off. Margaret Evans, CBC News, Brussels.